Hi everybody, this is Solomon, the Arkansas Diamond Miner, and today we dig. I brought a probe out with me today, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe around look some, for some gravel. Um, I've got a spot where uh, somebody had already put me on some gravel earlier in the year, and I'm pretty sure it's still here. So what I'll do is I'll show you kind of how I probe, and then uh, we'll get busy digging a hole. Um, I'm probably not going to dig a very deep hole because I'm already a couple hours behind. The park's been open for two hours, been visiting a little bit, I did some probing. I actually showed up late to begin with, so uh, I'm getting limited on time, so time usually equates to how deep you want to find your gravel. So uh, I'm pretty sure if I can find gravel that's you know three or four foot, that's not too bad of a hole to dig. I definitely would not try and dig six, seven, eight feet, anything where I've got to widen the hole just to be huge. So uh, I'm looking for a small hole today, so I'm looking for shallow gravel. So uh, I'm going to do some probing, and when I find some gravel I'm sure I want to go after, I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so uh, this is an area that there's already a little bit of a depression here. So um, I've already kind of poked through this a little bit, and there's right there. Looks like there's some pretty good gravel down there. I'm going to try it in just a little bit different a spot. So that crunchy sound is what I'm looking for. And as it as the, as the tip of that probe passes through the gravel, you'll kind of be able to, to feel and hear that crunchiness as it passes through it. So it's definitely there. And it goes from about that deep to about that deep. That tells me that gravel seam is a pretty thick seam. So uh, I'll be able to get several buckets worth out of it. It's really going to be dictated by time um, since it's already kind of a since it's already kind of a late start, I'm not sure how much I can actually bucket it up and get stored and fill the hole in by the time the park closes. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get busy. So uh, since this is not going to be a very deep hole, I don't have to go quite as wide. Um, I'm still, one of the things about digging a hole is you got to make sure you've got enough room to work in once you get down to the gravel you're going after. <clears throat> if I were to dig this hole that big around and go straight down, I wouldn't be able to work once I got down to the gravel because I couldn't maneuver a shovel and a bucket in there. So what I'm going to do is make sure that's wide enough that if I get down there uh, a few feet, I can still get to the gravel and be able to shovel it into a bucket to get it out. So uh, there are some guys that dig holes pretty often that, you know, everybody has their own method. Um, I used to do this a long time ago, but we always teamed up with two people. And uh, it was a lot easier, but with one person it's a whole lot more difficult. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep my hole kind of small. I still got to stay within the guidelines of the park. If I go over four feet, then it has to be sloped. Um, so. Uh, Basically, I'm just starting, I start out shoveling a ring out. That's going to be the perimeter of my hole. I may widen it just a little bit more. Um, that's not going to be very big once I get down deep. And you always want to keep the sides of your hole uh, going straight down until you get to your step and then go down again. You don't want your hole starting out. If it's a small hole, you don't want it just going straight like that and end up being three feet deep and, you know, that big around in the middle. So there's some design to it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to start out with this perimeter, maybe widen it just a little bit more. And then I'll take this out in the middle and just keep going down. I've got the, basically the first foot down. I got a few more feet to go, so I'm going to keep after it. When I'm digging, what I like to do is just use the shovel to take off a bite at a time. I'll kind of make a hole and then spread that hole out across the floor of the hole I started here. 
and just take a bite at a time with a shovel. So a couple of things I'm seeing here, there is some, uh, some of the original soil that's black, it's an organic, um, some of the old timers referred to it as black gumbo, some of it had real good gravel in it, some of it doesn't. This is actually a spot where uh, I started to dig earlier in the year, I knew this was here, but as I was getting down to it I got into a real good layer that was right on top of that black gumbo, and I dug that out. There's still a little bit of the organic soil right there, that black soil. Um, there's not much more gravel in it. The seam that I was chasing at that time kind of dried up and I had to end up filling my hole back in. But uh, regular miners, you know, some of the guys that come down here and really hit this hard, I mean, the real deal miners have been digging out here for 40 years plus, you know, for a long time. And they've dug a lot of holes and they've dug a lot of this gravel out and it's all been filled back in. Doesn't mean there's not still gravel here. The guys that are really good at this, at digging holes, know where to find it and they know how to find it and they're good at getting to it. Um, it's just for me, my personal opinion, this is a whole lot of work for a maybe finding a diamond. Um, now, if you do get down to that old gravel bed, there's a chance that it's got, you know, diamonds that have never seen the light of day, you know, because they've washed in there thousands of years ago or however long. So, you know, when you're surfing, when you're searching on the surface, you know, scratching up surface gravel like I normally do out of the furrows, um, you know, that's been, that's been on the surface for a long time. So uh, when you dig down like this and get to those old gravel seams, um, you know, that's stuff that's not been looked through unless you get into mine tailings. So uh, I'm not good enough at this to tell whether or not it's in mine tailings, but I do know that if you're going through organic soil, that soil was here long before those mines were. This means that's ground they haven't been to underneath it. So uh, knowing that I'm, you know, that I dug right here and, and hit black soil, then down below it should be pretty good gravel. So I'm going to keep digging. Okay, so uh, I wanted to kind of stop, move the camera up here a little closer and show you. This is the black layer of organic material I was talking about. And... Uh, you can actually kind of smell it, it's kind of pungent, and underneath it, you know, a little ways under, about a foot under that, is the gravel that I'm going to, so it's not really that deep. Um, I actually can see the edges of the gravel seam that I was digging uh, a couple months back, that was actually in the gumbo and on top of the gumbo, and I'll grab the camera and show you guys what I'm seeing here. Um, it's kind of hard to dig through it and not actually bucket it up, but that's not what I'm going after today, and um, I've actually already harvested a lot of it out of this spot when I was digging here last time. So, I, you know, I kind of remembered that it was here. I had to remind myself exactly where. So, uh, I'll show you guys kind of the gravel I'm looking at here. Okay. This may not uh, work very well with my shadow here. There is a lot of gravel. Now I actually dug several buckets of that. Uh, I can't remember now how many, but uh, I didn't actually find anything in it. If I had dug, say, I don't know, 40 buckets worth of it, my chances would have gone up quite a bit. But, you know, like I said, when you're digging a hole, that's a lot of work. Getting that many buckets, you really need a longer day. But uh, I've cleaned most of that gravel out when I dug here. And uh, there's a little bit more of it right there, kind of goes around. This spot right here, in front of me, you can see it's kind of loose and it's got a lot of water in it. <clears throat> that was actually kind of a test hole I dug uh, when I was hitting that gravel, so I kind of knew this was here. But when, you're when you come out here to dig holes, you got to do prospecting. Because there's no sense digging a hole if you don't know there's gravel under it. And uh, since I was pretty sure this was here, you know, nothing, you know, 
since I had been digging here earlier back during the summer and I didn't get down all the way to that gravel very good I just I kind of poked into it just to see what it looked like and then covered it back up because it was the end of the day but uh, before you ever take off on a digging a hole make sure it's got something in there you're going to want when you get to it one of these probes right here is uh, just about any machine shop can make you one that is not a stainless I would recommend getting a stainless probe um, a buddy of mine actually just made that for me he had a machine shop close to where I live and uh, hadn't seen him in a long time but he made that for me kind of as a gift and uh, it works for me it's not very long it's about a five foot probe maybe a little under five foot so um, yeah using that and you can kind of see there's one of the holes where I uh, probed in before I got started. Where'd it go? Right there it is. So that kind of helps keep you on course when you're digging down too. So I've got to uh, clean, you know, dig up that side a little bit. I wanted to kind of punch a little bit deeper to show you guys that organic material right there. Now I'm getting into some water down there, which is that's kind of a good sign to me because the water is flowing through the gravel underneath the ground so that means I'm getting down on that gravel layer alright so deep into my hole here and uh, you see that uh, that black material right there how it kind of stops right there in one spot that's because somebody has dug down in here so uh, the gravel is actually kind of taken from right there all the way down around the side and then there's another spot over here that's been dug down so I've actually had people dig on both sides of me of where my hole is so I feel pretty fortunate that this is still here it's just kind of a pocket but you can kind of see the material I'm digging it looks just like the gravel that I pull off the surface except it's it's been here a long time and more than likely nobody's ever looked at it so next task to start filling buckets and uh, normally what people will do is they'll fill their buckets up and get their hole filled back in the day they dig store their buckets until the next day then they'll come out and wash them all right so uh, still kind of working on the hole I got about half the gravel out of it you see that stuff just kind of turns to clay down there so uh, I don't think I want to get into the clay too much and that uh, that is the limit of how deep I can go without sloping my sides by quite a bit by another four feet or so so uh, I can't go any deeper that bucket right there is about three foot and the shovel handle or that uh, shovel is about three foot and the handle is almost even with the high side of the hole it's a lot shallower over here so I can't go any deeper than that but that's okay because that's right on top of clay so you can kind of see I've got some water coming in there so I'm going to have to move pretty quick and uh, try and outrun that water a bit and try and get the rest of that gravel out I've got about I think I've got about 12 buckets worth right now of gravel so I'm going to try and uh, finish I think I've got th another 12 buckets I can fill and that's going to be more than enough for me to wash tomorrow so I better get back after it uh, I've pretty well got everything I'm going to get out of this hole uh, without just going a whole lot deeper um, so yeah and, and I, I'm at four feet easily right now so uh, this is it I'm going to start going ahead and filling my hole in and I'm going to carry my buckets and I've got them stored overnight so tomorrow's just going to be a day of washing material and I'll wash all this stuff and see if I can come up with anything all right I've got my hole almost filled in I got about another maybe a foot a little over a foot of soil in some places for it to have this level to the top to be uh, in good graces with park so I've also got some more of my buckets to carry and I'm in about one hour until they close the search field so um, it doesn't look like a whole lot of dirt but moving that much dirt in an hour and moving those buckets within an hour I'm going to move pretty quick so I'm going to get back after it all right so I've got my hole filled in level with the top that uh, should be sufficient I've got one more bucket to carry and then a few things to carry out to the truck and then tomorrow I just uh, get to run material so I'm gonna call this good all right everybody I'm back for day two um, I've got about 
20, 21, 22 buckets from the hole that we dug yesterday. And uh, so today I'm going to let these things, I, I didn't have enough time to, to fill them with water last night. A lot of times it's a good idea to let your material sit wet if you're going to store it. Uh, that way it kind of helps start breaking down and, and getting easier to, to separate out. So, um, But I got them all out of my pen this morning as soon as I got here. Got them filled up with water. Um, Alright, so here's my wash station set up for today. Um, as always, I use these mineral totes. But today, for a breakdown screen, I have a milk crate. Um, seems to work pretty good. And it fits down inside that. And uh, most of you guys, if you've watched my videos, I try not to use a whole lot of custom equipment. Um, I try and, and do everything with equipment that's available to anybody that wants to come out and look for diamonds. Um, I do have uh, a breakdown screen that's a stainless steel piece that I actually cut off of an HVAC intake years back that was being discarded. Um, and I do have a yoke that's kind of custom made. Uh, it's a real simple setup, and I'll show you that uh, probably in one of my later videos for custom equipment. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be my setup. Breakdown screen right here. First wash right here. Then uh, my uh, finer gravel is going to be right here. All right, so I'm making pretty good progress. I uh, hope you can hear me well enough. They've got the leaf blowers out up there doing a little bit of landscape work. Um, anyhow, so. Uh, I'm making pretty good progress since I did not let my bucket soak overnight. I'm having to go through and uh, you know top them off with water, and then I'm having to break it up in my hand before I before I dump it into my breakdown there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and try and break as much up as I can, dump what's loose, and then fill them back up with water with the second half sitting to soak. So uh, the milk crate is actually working pretty good. Um, the clay doesn't really go through it, but you really don't have a good way to break up clay with a breakdown screen. You just got to work it through with your hands. So, uh, this is one of the buckets that's been sitting with water in it for a while. Got some pretty good gravel in it. That's good looking gravel right there. So now I've got the gravel inside this milk crate. Kind of break it up a little bit. Use my hands. Anytime you pull a big rock out, you want to make sure you wash everything off of it because when these are sitting in a stream, these are like riffles on a gold paint or on a gold sluice. For the diamonds, they'll fall in between them and stuff like that. You get a little bit of clay that washes over them. The clay can encase that and hold that diamond up against it. So you want to make sure you wash all your big tater rocks before you pull them out and throw them down. Actually uh, cleaned them up pretty good. You can see there's nothing. I mean, I might work just a couple more of those little pieces of clay through, but so that. Uh, that's the gravel that I'm going to be washing. Yeah, looks pretty good. A lot of, a lot of small stuff in there, so that's a good sign. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to dump the top of each one of those buckets in here, classify it, and, and the bottom part that's still real, uh, real sticky, real solid, I'm just going to 
put fresh water on the top of all these as I do that so they can be softening up while I'm working the material that's already softened. All right, so I am down to my last set of screens. Um, I have gone through about, I think it's 22 buckets of material and I've got it all washed down. I've actually got two buckets, so I might have to do some concentrating. But uh, so what I have in this screen set is not concentrated yet. I'm gonna go ahead and wash it and I'm gonna do a flip over here on this picnic table so I can show you what I'm seeing. And this is all the material that came out of the hole that I dug yesterday. So I'll go ahead and wash this screen set, and then uh, once I get it flipped, I'll show you what I've got. Alright, this is my... Uh, this is my flip here. You can see, I'm not sure how well you can tell, but there is a little bit of spinel in there. Got a pretty good little bullseye. Up on this side over here, I think there's one little piece of chromium diopside. Don't see any diamonds in it that I can tell. I actually did uh, did flip some a little earlier and seen a garnet, so that is a good sign. Anytime you uh, see a garnet in your centers, so I've got a little bit of concentrating to do before I can get out of here. I've got about an hour and a half. So I'm going to concentrate a bunch of this gravel down to one bucket, and I uh, think I'm going to call it a day at that. Alright, I've got my uh, bucket of concentrate here. This is the five gallon bucket I'm going to carry out tonight. Um, so yeah, all in, all in all it wasn't too bad a day. The material, it, it broke up a lot better than I thought. Using the milk crate to, for a breakdown screen to get the larger stones out seemed to work pretty good so I may stick with that method. Probably get a different kind of milk crate that's got the, the, the squares. That one's a slotted bottom so uh, I'll experiment with it a little bit and then uh, at some point I'll uh, have a video out for you guys for what I, what I use as far as what equipment I bring to the mind and any, any kind of special equipment like the harness that I, or the, the yoke that I made to carry buckets. Um, so we'll kind of go over that in a different video, but for today I'm going to call it good. I'm going to get cleaned up, get all my stuff packed up, and get out of here and call it a day. So thank you for watching my video. If you would, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you hit the notification icon, you'll know every time I put a new video up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you.